and welcome back to the middle seven of the Maiden Shade Open. My name is Derek Sar. I am with yours truly, Joey Tamale. We're here in Morristown, Minnesota on basically a Midwest hurricane day. Yeah, the winds are absolutely ripping. If you guys want to see some pros struggle, you guys tune into the right uh, the right place right here. Jumping right into hole eight, par three, 278 feet. This is such a difficult tunnel shot because the tunnel is so far away. And the green is actually catches pretty well. You want to land a little bit short because it's a bit of a dirt green. And then the grass, you know, grows up right about where the pin is. So it's easy to blow by it just a little bit. Yeah, this is also a difficult hole because it's uphill, so it forces you to play nose up. And I think that just hitting the gap on a nose up angle is a bit trickier. And yeah. if it was a flat, flat tunnel. And I believe these players will be having a headwind going into this as well. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, there really isn't much wind because you can see those bushes there on the right that protect this hole pretty well. It gets gusty up by the green. If there was any wind, I would say it'd be a bit left to right. Um, a lot of the wind today was coming from the east, which is off to Collins right here, and it was just a kind of a dead east to west wind. Colin here throwing a crystal luna that oh wow <laughs> I bet from the T pad that almost looked like it kicked in. That was right in front of the chains. Yeah. I think that was a pretty good tree. I think he would have gone way past the basket if he hadn't hit that. And uh even still he's left with about twenty five feet. Here's Ben looks like oh, a that looks good some sort of mid-range maybe an m4 wow yeah. what great control by ben that'll work it, it's always so much nicer to park it and on days like today you know it's hard to get a good putting game going with this much wind it's it just feels so much more difficult when you start putting well and the wind is just ripping you just want to get it as close as you can off the tee otherwise you know 15 footers feel shaky yeah and louis blew by that basket. I mean, he still has 25 feet for his par. So still a little bit of meat left on the bone. Jared, a bit more of a nose down, loft putt. He also air balls, but he only has about 15 feet left. And Colin went by a little bit. Great putt, though. Doesn't even matter. That one is a great two to get. I chalk this one up to a bonus, too. Yeah, I would say the same. Here's Louie. You can see that right to left. For him, I would guess it'd be more of a left to right because he's facing us, but got it. Oh, wow. Spin Great putt's putt. working good for him. Yeah, that was dead center falling into the basket. Yeah, let's get a good replay of that. Perfect. Doesn't get much better than that. Those disc kings do catch those flatter putts really well. Yeah, I I about two years ago switched to a spin putt. And oh, oh my goodness. Jared. Yeah, he's not gonna be too happy about that one. Not a hole you want to get a four on. Just that's gotta be one of the shortest putts he's missed all year long. That's not that's very uncharacteristic of Jared. Ben's tongue. I love it. <laughs> him, him and Kale, they do that a lot. They, they, they call it the Jordan tongue, Michael Jordan. Jared oh, wow. with the unfortunate bogey falls back to the field, and look at that. We got a four-way tie. Yeah, being four under even right now is a great score to be at. Yep. This is another. This is maybe the most bonus birdie yet on the course. This is a very, very tricky hole. You have to throw something hard enough to get up and over this hill, but touchy enough that it settles on this green. It's really easy to get the angle wrong. And because it drops off so much, any little mishap in your angle control kind of gets accentuated as it comes over the hill. So if you miss, if you hyzer it a bit too much, you can see just like that, it really hyzers once it comes over. And these guys are playing into a dead headwind and they can't feel it really from the tee. But once they get over that hill, the wind is really going to start to mess with their discs. Yeah, it seems that 
right here, you're not feeling the wind as much. But once the disc crests about right there, yep, you saw his disc just go straight up into the air. Yeah, he's probably got about 45 or 50 feet left. Yeah, that will be a very scary putt to run if he chooses to run that putt. I believe this is another PA3. Yeah, I think this is. This is the one that Louie throws. And this looks pretty dang good. That yeah. is, I mean, it is hard to park this hole. Getting inside the circle feels really good. And that is a very quality shot from Louie. Yeah, that looked great. It's, as you said, with this much wind, it makes the hole even more difficult. And Jared, that looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch short. Yeah, that'll play. Not a bad spot at all. I'd rather be putting parallel where he is. And ben. This is where a lot of shots end up. Yeah, that is a scary, scary putt to run. Co Colin's not in a terrible spot here. He's parallel with the basket, so he's not really putting downhill. Oh, it's like and that wind, I think, just lifted that <laughs> into the tree branch. This is a big putt for Jared. He just missed about a 10-footer, 15-footer, and this is... Oh. Yeah, and he's, he's struggling a little bit on the green so far, and yet still four down. So if he can kind of pull together his putting, I think he's in for a pretty solid round. Louie. This would be a great two. Yeah. yeah. Dead center, falling into the basket. What a great putt by Louis. No doubt about it. Rocking I, the khakis. I like it. I like it. I, I personally can never wear pants disc right. golfing. I, I just, I'd get too, way too hot. You and I are shorts guys through and through. No matter how many nettles or ivy I get into, <laughs> I don't think I can ever wear pants. Yeah. You know, of course, winter golf is different, but, sure. you know, during the summer, the hot days. Yeah. I, I, I could not wear pants. I couldn't do it. As I believe Louie carted the lone bird there. Look at that. Just perfect. Recent switch, and, I mean, it looks like he's been spin putting his whole life. Takes the one-stroke lead on the group. Yeah, and this is kind of the pace card, I would say. You know, these seem to be the, the yeah. better players as well at, at this tournament as we jump right into hole 10, par four. Th only 379 feet, but the ceiling is so low. A lot of players like to opt for the roller. Um, the best air shots I see landed right about here, but I have seen rollers get all the way down to the green and have a look for that eagle. Yeah, this is an extremely tricky roller because you have to almost overturn it because the slope of this hill, and you'll see right here, this is the miss on the roller, is that they don't, people don't overturn it enough because they're playing the roll for a flat ground roller, and this slope of this hill actually turns that, what looks like a good roller angle, into a cut roller. And not only do they have that slope, but they also have a right to left wind that's pushing this disc back. So Colin <laughs> says, I don't want to throw a roller, I'm gonna throw an air shot. This is a really good shot with that wind. And I mean, you see where he ended wow. up. Wow. He Colin's got one of the biggest arms in Minnesota and he just showed it off right there. That was, yeah. that's this, like a 500 foot shot he just threw right there. Something Holy like that. Cow. This wind is kind of exactly the wind that you want to throw that high hyzer. You see the same mistake made by Ben just not getting that roller turned over. And I mean, it's really hard to do that. Jared is also playing this, and that wind is just gonna pick it. You can see right there, pick it up. Yeah, it's pushing him left pretty well. He did not get it quite as high as Colin, so he's actually in the rough on the right side, but he's so far down there. And another tricky green. Yeah, this green slopes very fast, plus there's not a lot of grass around the basket, so the disc they slide. If you land pin high, you're going to be about 45 feet deep. Yep, that's exactly what happened to Ben. And I've been in Louis' spot before. That is a very, very difficult upshot. And uh, yeah. wow, he made that look just textbook. I'm telling you guys, this guy is the real deal. He is a heck of a player. Colin left with a jump putt. Oh my goodness. If you have the distance and the wind is right, I think that's the play. See, this is where Jared ended up on the right side. 
it's pretty thick back here. And I mean, right behind him there, that clearing, that's actually uh, hole 11's fairway. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he didn't quite get the lift that, that Colin did. I think he's throwing a forehand here. And Jared doesn't throw a ton of forehands. He's really good at scrambling with them. Yeah, as we a forehand see roller, right there. that's what it was. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that uh, You've that worked. got to be kidding me. Yeah, he looked at me after he threw that <laughs> shot, and uh, he was laughing. He couldn't believe he hit that gap. Holy cow. <laughs> That, that that is one of the best scramble shots I have ever seen. And even with the wind and the fast green, he just, oh, my goodness, Jared. Props, man. That was amazing. Oh, oh. BK. <laughs> he <laughs> stops and turns it around. Yeah, Dang. that's uh, a little high left. I didn't catch. Yeah, Jared. Go. What a three. What a scramble. And, I mean, that's a that's a confidence-boosting putt. I mean, he missed a 25-footer on the previous hole and a 10-footer on the hole before that. So it's good to make one of those putts. Colin making this hole look a little too easy. Yeah, just throw a hyzer and then jump putt. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do that next time. Yeah, it's very tempting to throw the roller on this hole, but you can see... It doesn't always work out super easy. Yeah, wow. And take a note of that form right there, that big reach back and his follow through as well. His left arm comes all the way around. So we got a little bit more movement here. It is tight on this cart. This is yeah. every, anybody's game. Three down on that hole for the group is pretty solid, I would say. This hole, hole 11, par four, 423 feet. This is a very tricky hole. There's not a lot of, there's not really a big gap to get out into the field, and that's kind of goal number one, just get out into the field. Uh, and then you're left, depending on how far you get, you know, between 280 to, you know, 150 feet left to the pin. Another wind affected hole, and you can see this tree that fell down. Louis is throwing this flex forehand, which according to the locals, used to be the most common play on this hole before Correct. this tree fell down. A lot of people now have kind of opted for this straight backhand gap, but Louis, I think Louis was playing this course blind. He, or oh, not wow. blind, but he hadn't played it in four years. Yep. And so he didn't know about the tree, which had been down for a couple of weeks, and so he just came and threw the same shot he's always thrown in this course. Colin throwing, I would say, the more common line now since that tree's down. It's not an easy shot, though. It's a pretty tight gap. Yeah, and with that wind, too, I believe being a headwind at this point, it this this green is accessible from the tee pad with no wind. Uh, big shout-out to Taylor Lupton taking the two on it with a forehand when that wow. log was not there. But with that log being there, that, like you said, that flex forehand, is, it's gone. That, that power flex forehand, it, it, well... It's just much smaller yeah, gap. Very, very small. And I think these guys are doing the right way. Oh, as Ben gets caught up. Yeah, so it is a huge left to right on oh. the drive. And now it's a straight headwind. And Ben was actually in a ditch. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, he was standing in a ditch. So he was on like an extreme down slope in this little tiny ditch that he just happened to land in. So threw it straight, straight into the ground. Yeah, this, this, this shot now becomes extremely difficult with this wind, especially because the trees guarding the basket make this a very low ceiling shot. And I do gotta say that the basket on the left that you see there is not the hole. Yeah, there it is. There's the basket. You can kind of see, you can kind of see it from where Jared was. <laughs> that is a really solid forehand from a guy who doesn't throw that many forehands. Yeah. Here's BK on his third. Definitely wants to put this close. Don't want to be taking bogeys out here. Fighting the wind. Wow. Yeah. That'll work. That would be a great par save if he's able to get that. Yeah. This is about as good as the backhand drive can get, I would say, especially in this wind. Wow, and Colin's throwing a driver here, it looks like. That looked like a very thin rim disc, something very overstable. Yeah, and that one got away from him a little bit. Yeah, just a Once bit it started deep. to fade, the bottom of the disc got right into that wind, and it just lifted it. 
And this is where the flex forehand landed. So wow. the gap is still there. You just have to really commit to hitting that smaller line. And yeah, same thing as Colin, except for he didn't get sneaky. He uh, he hit that branch and he's just lifted right into that tree. So he's left now with about 40, 40 feet. Jeez, and look at his shirt too. You can just see the wind just ripping on it. He's gonna have to put this one really low. Wow, yeah. it looked like he went through the basket. <laughs> yeah, right. You can see he's not even disappointed. Yeah, you just want to keep it close. I, I don't know about you, Joy, but I sometimes like to club up to like even a pig for myself if it's this much wind, just so I know it just is going to go right and left, you know, as I play. Yeah, I uh, I have not done that, but I know of I know Eagle is famous for kind of putting with his MD5. Yep. When it gets windy out. Yeah, just to. Uh, Keep it close, and you just—it doesn't get affected as much. Oh, is oh. Jared not affected by the wind, even with his main putter? What a great putt! Yeah, I'd this is—you know—some confidence is building here. Two back-to-back -back putts, especially this one, that are good makes. And you know, Jared's putt does have that wobble, but Ken Climo once famously said that wobble in a putt isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it can help with the wind, cut through the wind, it doesn't get affected as much. And I, I, I have a little bit of wobble as well, and I definitely agree with him on that. You have more than a little bit of wobble on your putt. <laughs> I've heard Paul McBeth say the same thing. He purposely puts wobble on his putt to get it to catch more of the chains and so it doesn't slice through. Colin with an unfortunate par there after that drive, but honestly, not bad. Yeah. Jared with a lone birdie. No bogeys on that hole. That yeah. was great. I bet all of these guys are not even feeling that bad with that. No, that's that's with, a pretty solid. With hit. how much wind is ripping. And speaking of ripping winds, hole 12, par four. This one is reachable. I believe these players will have a right to left coming mm -hmm. off the tee, maybe a little bit of a tail. It's very difficult to throw a backhand to get it all the way down there because you have to have it so straight maybe with like a touch of hyzer flip on it as well. Um, a lot of players that have a big forehand can opt for the forehand to get all the way down there, but right side is a bit of trouble. Yeah. This is going to be fun. These guys are all throwing extremely flippy discs. I know Louie is throwing a road runner. And I mean, this is, you can look at the trees. I think this is like, tw I would say it's about 30 to 40 mile an hour tailwind. I mean, this is... Yeah, you can see his hair kind yeah, of ripping so, in the front. <laughs> so Louis throwing a Roadrunner, and for those of you who know Roadrunners, they do not fly like this. That never even flipped. <laughs> like a destroyer? <laughs> yeah, that, that flew like a destroyer. That never even flipped up. Wow. We all couldn't believe it. We thought it was hilarious. That was a great shot, though. I think Colin, Colin throwing his Leopard. Yep, that is the famous Leopard. You may have to get over on this a little bit because that leopard is a little more stable than most leopards. Yeah, I've heard that from him as well. And yeah, that works. Wow. No way. That's a great shot. Oh my goodness. Just to be within the circle on this hole is blows my mind. It, it is such a difficult tunnel shot. It, it's, it's another one of those wide open to tunnel shots, which is so difficult to hit. Yeah, I would say this is a tough par three. I, uh, I, I just don't see the par four element of it. Doesn't seem like quite a two shot hole. And I mean, Colin showed you right there by parking it. I mean, it's a fantastic shot, but I would say this is definitely just a, a very solid pro level par three. Yeah, and, and Ben and Louis are in the same spot, and they both have a look for the mm -hmm. for the eagle essentially on this hole. Yeah, I would say about. 45 feet for BK. We The wind is still howling in here, so this is not a comfortable putt for either of these guys. Oh, you can wow. see it just slam that That disc. did just get slammed down. Yeah. I think with no wind, that may have been perfect, but like you said, that tailwind is really pushing him down. And Louis likes to go through his motions a few times, envisioning the disc going in. It's a good run. Come on. Wow. With a tap in eagle. 
Holy cow, Colin. It's definitely a very good feeling, too, on this hole. Oh, yeah, no kidding. I think during practice, I've toed it only one time. And I've played this course, you know, four or five to ten times at this point. And sure. Crazy, too. I think there is kind of a tempting over-the-top route, kind of similar to the to a hole 10, uh, but it's a little more risky. I've tried that over-the-top route, and uh, you definitely have to get a little bit more lucky. So, yeah, a two on this hole is, is pretty fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, five under for the group on that hole. <laughs> shows you why they're on feature card. <laughs> that is unbelievable. So we've kind of gone through the gauntlet there. That was a bunch of tough holes, and now we're on to hole 13, par 3, 223. This is another must-get birdie. It's just right there, just a hyzer with an overstable putter. This is this is about as easy as it gets on this course. Uh, once again, you know, wide open green. The wind's definitely going to be affecting these shots. Colin going firebird for the skip. You do kind of have to... <laughs> play that yeah he got a big one jeez <laughs> so yeah it's a bit of an interesting shot it's definitely a bit of a sawed off backhand um, but once you get past the gap yeah I believe I, I prefer the mid range on this oh I know there's a mando on the right I think Jared's still left of it though they actually weren't playing the mando this year oh they weren't yeah they weren't playing the mando That's, oh interesting. he said that right after he threw they said, yeah, it's not on. It's not in the caddy book. Oh, I, f I feel last year that it was, so that, that, that is, that is yep. a change yeah, it I didn't was, know. Yeah, it huh. was two years ago, and then this year they didn't have that. Louis, that's going to be a bit short. That is kind of why some people, like Colin, will throw the driver to get that skip. The grass is pretty grabby, and if you don't have a full hyzer angle, you can come up short like Louis did. And Ben's throwing... He calls this disc Roger because Roger did the die on it. And that is yep. pretty good. Roger power. <laughs> Great shot, Ben. Here's Jared's out. That'll do. Louis from about 38 feet. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The wind was just playing with his disc. Wow, you see the smile on his face. I'm so excited to see this in slow-mo. Look at that. And then right here, boop. Oh, he just <laughs> drops it a That's little really bit. That's really sweet. <laughs> what a great angle. Was that your angle, Joey? No, that was Craig. That was, was Craig. He was okay. standing right next to me. Gotcha, gotcha. Look at those trees going in the background. Oh, jeez. Oh. What wind? Yeah. <laughs> this guy knows no pressure. It's like he doesn't even doesn't even realize that it, there's wind or any other elements around him. Yeah, so cool to see these guys hitting these putts like there's no wind at all. Yeah, Ben. A hole you definitely hate getting the par, but with windy days like this, pars never feel that bad yeah it's crazy how much the scoring changes on any course in the in the wind and you just you're just kind of surviving sometimes it's like that when it's really rainy too and you're just like exactly. I'm just trying to get up down for my par trying to avoid mistakes instead of trying to be aggressive and that's when it's this windy you know that's the same thing just avoiding mistakes instead of really trying to be aggressive all the time and speaking of mistakes, hole 14, if you make a mistake on the drive and you land to the right, you are going to have a very difficult time getting up and down for your par. It's just a dead straight tunnel shot. These guys all have that hyzer flip shot or flippy, you know, mid-range in the bag or putter. As we see the Luna coming out from Colin. Yikes. Uh, pulled it just a little right. I don't know if the wind will be too much of a factor in this hole because it is so guarded from where the wind is coming from. Yeah, there wasn't much wind on this hole. There's also kind of a line of trees at the end of this hole that goes perpendicular uh, to this fairway, and they were kind of blocking a lot of the wind as well. So there wasn't any wind kind of rushing down the tunnel. Louis, yeah, not a good shot. Yeah, straight into the ground. I, I've had that happen where it feels like the disc just kind of falls out of your hand. I, I can't explain it. I don't know why that happens, but 
you know, backhand isn't my primary throw, and it just sometimes just falls out. I, yeah, I think got that. it might be too just not wanting to get the disc nose up like this, trying to avoid this, and then you just kind of overcorrect a little bit too much. Oh, but a good pick, good kick. Yeah, good kick. Still outside the circle. This is another one though that it's just right there. Everybody, there's definitely the pressure to get the two. This is another one where, you know, it feels like you should be birdieing. And that needs to come back. Oh, well, great kick. It'll get him a long look. But you'd rather be left than right on this fairway any day. Yeah, and this is kind of the last little dinker hole before a bunch of long <laughs> par fours. We'll really see the wind take factor yeah. coming up. <laughs> but it, it's it's after this, it's just a bunch of full rips for five or six holes, as hard as you can throw drivers. So, And those aren't guaranteed threes in any way, so you know, getting the two out on this hole kind of puts you in a good position as you move into some harder par fours. Wow. I, I, I guess I didn't know Louie had such a long jump putt. That was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, that was a good, and it's the same at spin putt. I don't know how long he had been practicing that spin putt before this tournament, but he told me this was the first tournament that he actually was using the spin putt. But it looks really good. Yeah, absolutely. It looks very clean and smooth. This is Ben range right here. Yeah, this would be a good one to pick up for Ben. Oh, he just mm -hmm. pulled it right. And Colin, I, his disc is on that log, I believe. I believe that's where it landed. Yep. <laughs> so he's playing underneath it as best as he can. Yeah, he gets his little index card off the disc like everybody. Oh. Yeah, and the interesting thing to say about the scoring, they these guys are all doing PDGA live scoring, and... They don't actually have the actual pars on here. So it's all Iron Man par. So I think sometimes it's a bit weird to see after, like, Colin is going to be now seven down, Jared seven down. These guys are all six or seven down. But on the PDJ live scoring, it says, like, one down <laughs> or even. <laughs> yeah. And that can be a little bit demoralizing, <laughs> I think, because, you know, we play this game to, to par, and I think... Honestly, in disc golf, for most people, birdie is kind of the expectation once you get to a bit of a higher level. Oh, that's for um, sure. And so to see that, feel like you're playing decent, and then see that you're like one down. <laughs> one down after the 14 right, holes or right. something. Yep. <laughs> but there you have it. That is the middle half of this tournament. The next set of holes are going to be so fun to watch. I, I cannot wait, Joey. Yeah, we have a good finish here. These guys are all still pretty close. Uh, they're all going to be duking it out to see who makes lead card. Uh, we hope you'll join us for the back nine of the 2020 Maiden Shade Open. Thank you, guys.